Oh. Welcome to the training module on load line surveys. This module is part of Float Sea's Marine Survey Training Series. Let's move on to Section 1, Introduction to International Load Line Convention. We will briefly look at the history of the Load Line Convention, its objectives, how the convention is structured. We will also look at some of the definitions that are used in the convention. Click a button to start a topic. It is the British Merchant Shipping Act of 1875 that started the system of marking a load line up to where a ship is allowed to load. Samuel Plimsoll, a member of the British Parliament who initiated the process of development of the 1875 Merchant Shipping Act. Through his efforts to become coal merchant, he came to know about the plight of the seamen who had to sail on board on or the overloaded, so-called coffin ships. Due to his role in the requirement for marking load lines, these lines are known after his name, Plimsoll Line. 1875 Merchant Shipping Act neither had substance nor teeth. The load line mark could be placed wherever the owner wanted. One owner reportedly placed the Plimsoll mark on the funnel. Well that's not going to help is anyone's guess. It took a few years before some rational standards were developed for assignment of load lines. In 1906, British Parliament extended the application of the requirements even to foreign ships visiting Great Britain. Gradually, many countries started creating their own load line regulations. First International Load Line Convention was adopted in 1930. The present International Convention on Load Lines was drawn up in 1966 and entered into force on July 21, 1968. Various amendments were adopted in 1971, 1975, 1979, and 1983, but they required positive acceptance by two-thirds of parties and never came into force. The Load Line Protocol of 1988, which entered into force since February 3, 2000, introduced tacit acceptance scheme and harmonized system of survey and certification. As of May 2016, 161 countries representing 98.5% of world tonnage are signatories to the 1966 International Convention on Load Lines, and 103 countries representing 95.3% of world tonnage are signatories to the 1988 Load Line Protocol. Let's now look at what is that the Load Line Convention is trying to achieve. As enforcers of the convention, it is important for marine surveyors to have an appreciation of the objectives of the convention. There are mainly eight objectives for the International Load Line Convention. Click on each tab. First is ensuring a robust hull that can withstand severe sea conditions. This means that the general structural strength of the hull is sufficient for the draft corresponding to the freeboard assigned to the vessel. This has to be ensured for both local and global strength. According to the convention, ships built and maintained in conformity with the requirements of a classification society recognized by the administration may be considered to possess adequate strength. For vessels not classed, the hull structural aspects have to be specially considered by the load line assigning authority. Well, thank you for watching a short session from the module load line survey. You can visit the website of Float Seas Academy, lms.floatseas.com to view the complete course. Please feel free to ask any doubts you might have to the contact information of the tutors. You may also send your feedback to the tutors. Thank you very much. Thank you.